On slide 34, we make a comparison between the multi-level approach taken in factor analysis and the multi-level approach taken in leap and class analysis. And that becomes quite important for the <coughs> latent transition analysis that we will get to. So on the left, you have the same model that we talked about in earlier slides. You have a within factor model with random intercepts and they are continuous latent variables on the between level and if we want to we can uh, describe the co correlation between these by a single factor and we typically would want to have residual variances as well although they are often quite small when uh, you talk about clusters such as schools or communities and they can actually then be ignored now, on the right-hand side, you have the uh, tradition in latent class analysis, which seems to be in the original approach to multi-level modeling. So here you have the same five indicators, and now you have a latent class variable, C, influencing the indicators or making them correlated, instead of the FW continuous factor that you have here. You have then the nominal latent class variable C. And here's a case where we have three categories, three cl latent classes for C, which means that you have two intercepts, or means if you want to describe them that way. So one less than the number of categories because the probabilities have to sum to one. So you get two in random intercepts, which then are, have, are continuous latent variables that vary across the clusters, be it schools or communities. And we can make them correlated. And if there are many classes, there will be many random intercepts. And you may want to simplify things by putting a factor between them to describe the, the um, random intercept covariation by a single dimension instead of many. On slide. 35, I repeat the model that we just looked at on the left hand side. And again, that seemed to be the uh, original attempt at multi level latent class analysis put forward by, for instance, Jerome Vermont in uh, articles 2003 and 2008. And uh, Tiemer Asparhov and I also did a, a, some work on that and uh, wrote a chapter in a mixture book, 2008. What we'd focus on, however, was to try to move from left to right. That is, we want to put the random intercepts on the indicators themselves, rather than on the latent class variable. So the indicators have random intercepts, and they become continuous latent variables on between. And to reduce the dimensionality, you could put a factor behind them, and reducing then the numerical integration in maximum likelihood estimation from 5 to 1, uh, which you get if you don't have these residuals. They can be, they are typically quite small in applications where the between level corresponds to clusters, as opposed to individuals, as we will see later on. Why this formulation is, formulation is important is that when you turn towards latent transition analysis, you want to look at the latent class variable at a certain time point, influencing a latent class variable at a later time point. And what's nice about the formulation here on the right is that C represents within cluster variation, clearly separated out between variation already on the observed item level. So th all that between level variation is pulled out of of these boxes and C influences the within part of the boxes, so to speak. So then C on C here, the influence between C's over time become, uh, that becomes a, uh, a within level influence. On the left hand side, however, C here now, just like in IRT, contains both within and between level variation. And if you have then a latent transition analysis built on that, you will confound within and between level variation.
Now let's take, let's take an example of the, the model on the right from the applied paper by Henry and Moutian. So that appeared in the Journal of Structural Equation Modeling and it had to do with adolescent smoking typologies with individual and contextual predictors. So we're looking at over 10,000 uh, individuals in 206 communities, so these are the clusters. Six categorical indicators and three classes were found describing various kinds of student smoking behavior. And random intercept variation was found for the indicators, which represents a cross-community variation and particularly strong variation for certain items and where the variation was related to the proportion of youth living in poverty. So for instance, most friends are smokers, that item, had a much larger probability of being endorsed in communities with a large poverty proportion. So you can have these between level, level two variables influencing the random intercept. And you can think of this variation across communities as a form of measurement non-invariance. In this case, particularly so for most friends are smokers. 